In this video, I'm going to discuss how to write a research proposal. Now, the research proposal could be a grant proposal or a PhD proposal. Uh, there are five points that I would like to discuss in this video, and I think the first three points refer to just research proposals for studying uh, your, your PhD or an MA, and the last two points specifically refer to uh, grant proposals. So the first point is uh, that you should show that you have a good background in the topic that you're investigating. To establish a good background, you need to draw on th uh, three factors. Your research, your previous teaching, and your services. You do this because you want to show that you're excited and you're personally very interested in the research topic. And this is one of the distinctive features that differentiates between writing a research proposal and writing a paper. Because in paper writing, you do not usually talk about your personal excitement about the topic, but you remain so-called more objective and you review the available literature on that topic. Whereas in research proposals and grant proposals, you need to show that you really like this topic and you have some personal reasons and personal connections with this topic. Uh, so let's talk about uh, research, teaching, and service because these are three factors that can show to the reader of your proposal that uh, you have some links with this topic and it's not just some kind of fancy excitement that, that drives you. So number one is research. If you have published any papers in the past or uh, if you have presented some papers at a conference or a seminar, it would be a wonderful idea to show that your research proposal has some close connection with uh, the topic that you have done in the past because uh, the fund provider or your potential future uh, uh, PhD supervisor needs to ascertain that you have something that really links you with this proposal. If you do not have much experience in doing research, it would be a good idea to draw upon your teaching experiences. If you are an English teacher who is interested to investigate vocabulary, try to discuss what, what makes you very much interested in terms of the teaching experience that you have accumulated in your classrooms. I'll give an example. When I was writing my proposal for applying for PhD to the National Institute of Education here in Singapore, uh, my proposal was about uh, uh, the listening, listening processes of test takers um, on a high stakes test. Uh, so I didn't have much research experience, to be honest. So what I did was I, I tried to create a connection between my experience in teaching because I was a teacher of some uh, test preparation classes, and I had done for quite uh, I've, uh, I've done it uh, for quite a long time. Uh, so I created a connection between that experience and what I was applying for. I uh, links the gap that I had ident identified in the literature with my understanding of how students listen in those classes. I think in the end it was not bad because, well, I got admitted to the university and I was given a scholarship for four years. The other thing that you could do if you do not have much teaching experience is to draw on the services that you have provided to the community. But what does that mean? Service here refers to any voluntary form of service that you have provided. For example, uh, you have voluntarily and of course free of charge reviewed some papers or some grant proposals or you have done some workshop for a group of people. That service, if you can create a connection between it and the proposal, will be of much help. Two is uh, most often in writing a research proposal or a grant proposal, the literature review should be short and sweet. It should be short, that's clear and concise, because uh, there's a, most often a kind of word limit or page limit, uh, with, beyond which it's not suggested to you know, uh, drag your literature review on and on. Which brings me to the third point, which is about the requirements of writing your proposal. Most often uh, there is a word limit requirement or page limit requirement that we should take into account. In addition, sometimes, um, the topics that are supposed to be put into the proposal are already specified by, for example, the fund provider or by the university. They say that you need to talk about the background of, you, of this investigation and um, the literature review, your own proposal, and if it's a research pro uh, proposal for getting a grant, 
then you have to specify the milestones and the budget as well. Try to strictly uh, stick with that. Think about the, the amount of time and uh, energy and effort that you invest in writing that proposal um, because, you know, if, um, if you do not follow those requirements, chances are that your proposal can get very easily disqualified and you don't really want, want that to happen to you. Now, the, four, uh, the fourth one is about budgeting carefully. This actually refers to uh, grant proposals and is very important. Uh, try not to underrepresent or overrepresent the budget needs for your project. Why is it important? Because when you embark on your project, uh, let's say in the middle of doing your project, you just realize that, oops, you need a software package, but you have not budgeted for it. And then that, that can affect the goals and the milestones that you have set for yourselves to the extent that you may not be able to achieve uh, maybe one or two of the major goals. That's not really good because it will not leave a good record of you and the impression that it will give to your fund provider might not be very positive. Because in the future, if you apply to the same fund provider again, they might go back to the milestone, the, uh, uh, the, the budgeting that you had uh, created before and um, you know, decide as to whether uh, you were able to budget carefully and whether um, you were able to, to uh, meet the requirements that uh, they were expecting you to meet. Which brings me to the fifth point, that's about defining your milestones very carefully. A milestone refers to um, you know, your, your goals, uh, that, your objectives that you set for yourself um, in your research project. I give an example. We, in Singapore, we often think about milestones in terms of uh, objectives which are supposed to be met over a certain period of time. For example, in, during the first quarter or the second or third quarter of the first year and so on and so forth. I would recommend that you specify those milestones flexibly. For example, if you want to hire a research assistant, do not uh, you make a commitment to uh, hire the research assistant only in the first quarter of the year. You might say during the first two quarters of the year, uh, I will have hired a research assistant, so two quarters actually equal to six months, because every quarter is, is three months. So you have given yourself six months to look for a good research assistant and hire that person, uh, as opposed to if you just give yourself one month to hire a research assistant, which um, is not a very feasible idea. So let's wrap up everything that we have discussed. In order to write a successful research proposal for PhD application or a grant research proposal, uh, I would recommend that you take into account these five factors. One of them was background and the connection between your research background, the teaching background, and also the service background that you have had in order to show that excitement, that zeal in you and the connection of whatever you have done so far in that field and what you're applying for. Two is to write a short and sweet, that's a concise literature review which is rather non-technical, rather than a very highly technical and lengthy kind of piece of review. Three is to follow the requirements closely and orthodoxly, orthodoxly because uh, if you do not do that, um, chances are that you get disqualified, as I mentioned before. Number five is to budget carefully do not underrepresent or overrepresent your needs. If you need something, just budget for it, but also take into consideration the cap for which you can apply. And number five is to define flexible milestones so that you will be able to meet each of them. Uh, now that brings me to the end of this presentation. I hope that you will find, them, find these five factors useful in your future applications. Uh, thank you very, very much for your attention. If you happen to like the video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. I'll get back soon with another video. Thank you. Have a good day.